Hello friends, good morning, Brandy here, and this is our 16th day of 30 days of wellness and connection together. And joining us is my little mini me, <laughs> Shay. Um, we're snuggling here on the couch. So today I want to talk to you about my dental dilemma. So I've been alluding to something that's been going on in my body. Um, I think it is this dental issue that is affecting my thyroid, which I mentioned a few videos before this. And I just wanted to give you my perspective on how I am dealing with this, because I think it will be helpful for you um, to see an integrative approach. So there is no perfect approach to any health issue, right? But I think some of us tend to go on either side in the extreme way, either just focusing with conventional Western medicine and doing whatever the doctor says with no research, or being on the other side with Eastern or natural medicine and um, maybe being in a little bit of denial with how serious the situation is. And this is kind of where I was. So I think it is helpful for me to show you how I have moved more into the middle. Taking the situation seriously, <laughs> bless you. <laughs> Why don't you go get a tissue? <laughs> and how I'm taking it seriously, because um, this is something I'm modeling for him too. So just a little bit of background with this, and I don't want to get into the details um, or disgust you. It actually does not appear as bad as it will sound but I do have a molar that has abscessed. So it is infected underneath. This is a tooth that has had a ton of trauma in my lifetime. So I'm teaching him that I did not have the best diet when I was younger. I didn't have the best dental hygiene. I had a lot of cavities, amalgam <laughs> fillings, um, that were then, they all needed to be replaced at one point. So I don't have those anymore in my mouth. I have the composites instead. But this was a tooth that had a few fillings and repairs, then was cracked, then was crowned. So it's it has had a lot of trauma. And that's what the dentist is suspecting, that it's just had so much trauma that the nerve became inflamed and white blood cells flood to the area, that's when pus accumulates. And it's really trying to heal this tooth. But um, what the dentist is not talking about, and this is where my education with all of this comes in, is that you know the tooth is weak, the tooth is malnourished. So it's not just because of the trauma, but maybe from nutritional deficiencies too. So anyway, <laughs> um, back in May, my dental hygiene had kind of gone downhill a little bit um, along with other things when we were in our lockdown. Um, but then I realized that I started bringing back the daily flossing, interproximal brushing of my teeth. And then because of that, my, especially my lower jaw, all the gums became really inflamed and painful. And then it started becoming more localized to that one tooth. And I called the dentist got an appointment, but right before I went in, the pain had diminished and I didn't even have any cold or heat sensitivity. But he was telling me that I needed a root canal. We had an x-ray, you could see the beginnings of an infection. And, um, and that was great because this is my number one tip when dealing with a health issue and trying to decide which way to go is I love using conventional medicine for diagnostic purposes. But you have to realize that they are only looking at the physical cause, well, or not even the physical cause, the physical manifestation of what is happening. It's still a question of what is the root cause. So um, they said they were gonna give me information about, or a referral to go see someone else about the root canal. They never gave it to me. And I was kind of like, okay, this is good because I could do all this research on my own. Um, really started doing a lot of natural therapies that have sustained my health. I do, the infection has deepened, but I don't have any pain at all. 
no swelling. The tooth did abscess, so there's a little sore that came out from the side, but that is my body's way of helping the situation to drain it. So that's why I don't have any pain. So this is all good, except that the infection is still there and that I do feel it is affecting my thyroid. And of course, if it's spread, it can be very serious. It could go to my brain, it could go to my heart. So it could be a systemic infection, which is not good at all. Um, serious, right? <laughs> very serious. So I did see my dentist again this week. Um, that's when we saw that the infection was worse. And I did um, talk to one of the surgeons there about possibly pulling the tooth. And then I talked to, I finally did get the referral for um, this other woman who specializes in root canals. And I talked to her as well. And with both of them, so this is the second thing, <laughs> um, is that you need to do a lot of research on your own and you need to ask the right questions. And don't be afraid to drill your health practitioners. I think they respect me more because I go in with a lot of questions and they can tell that I'm very, very serious about my health care. So, and again, this is something I'm modeling. <laughs> um, <laughs> so anyway, um, I learned with both of them that they wanted me to take systemic antibiotics first. And I was like, I really do not want to do that. I want to deal with this infection locally. There are things I know I can do to help keep my body clear as long as we're clearing out this issue and, um, and protecting it. So that's what the root canal is gonna do. They're gonna go and clean it out and seal it up. And then the work is on me, I feel. So anyway, both of them were comfortable with me not doing the systemic antibiotics. So again, this is something I'm glad that I brought up. Otherwise, I was just gonna be put under this, um, this common treatment that is going to completely diminish my gut flora and will, um, prevent me, I believe, from healing as quickly, since we've already talked about this weekend last, how important gut health is. So ask good questions. And then, of course, like I just mentioned, you can use your natural medicine. This is where it is so good. It's for preventative care. Had I been better with that when I was younger, um, then I may not be here right now. But natural um, therapies, are going to help sustain my health. And nutrition is a big part of that. So that is something I'm going to need to continue after um, I do one of these procedures. And then, you know, find the practitioners who will work with you. I was prepared if neither one of these practitioners was going to listen to me or consider other options and I was going to see someone else. So you do need to have that confidence too. Now I scheduled a root canal. Um, I do have some more questions that I want to email the practitioner, this dentist, but I'm pretty sure I am going to continue with that. Um, but again, there's a lot of things that I know I need to continue after this procedure. She does say I'm going to be in a little bit more discomfort because I'm not taking the antibiotics, but we both agree that it'll be fine. And she told me too, your body is really strong. Just like the fact that it created this side abscess, that I'm in no pain, um, is very significant. So I just wanted to share that with you friends. Maybe you can tell me what you appreciate, both about conventional medicine and natural medicine. Um, I wasn't doing this for sympathy <laughs> or for advice. Um, but if you have a story around this too, I would love to hear that as well. And I think tomorrow I'm going to share more about specifically what I'm doing to sustain my oral health naturally. And I think I'm going to turn this into a blog post too, because I've been wanting to do it for a while. So I'm going to go work out now <laughs> and spend some time with my family. Um, I will talk to you all again tomorrow. Take care.